Now, the death of Prince Mangusutu Wutelezi has triggered not only the battle for the pivot of Zulu cultural and political life and the position of the kingdom's premiership, but also a battle for a potentially politically stranded KwaZulu-Natal black vote. Now, these were the words of Think Foundation founder, Dr. Lucky uh, Matebula, who argues that the battle for the KZN vote ahead of the 2024 election has officially begun. He joins us now to discuss this further. Very good morning to you, Dr. Matebula. Thank you so much for your time. I mean, um, the... Prince Mangusutu Butelezi was laid to rest yesterday. And as that was happening, in the build-up to his final day where he was being laid to rest, uh, there was a lot of mixed emotions by South Africans from all walks of life. In fact, we heard yesterday um, his son, uh, Prince Zuzi, Zuzi Fabutelezi, saying that if you ever make the mistake of um, viewing him through the tinted political glasses, You've missed the measure of the man. Of course, speaking to, to the other side, as uh, South Africans react to the passing of, uh, um, uh, of, of Mangu Sutu Butelezi, what's your view on, on the discussion point, the mixed views and the conversations around uh, Prince Butelezi? Well, thank you, Mbo. Uh, look, Prince Butelezi, there is now consensus in South Africa that... Uh, his legacy is a complex one, uh, but clearly yesterday it was clear to everybody that of all the legacies that he has built, Prince Butelezi has positioned himself as part of South Africa's establishment. He, he has a place in the establishment of this country. What he said in this country had ears in the highest echelons of power, even if his politics were contested. But one thing about Prince Butelez is that he commanded a constituency that many people in this country after his death will be clamoring to actually get that constituency for their political purposes. That he was the, the, the prime minister of the largest uh, kingdom in southern Africa, it's not a joke. He, he, he presided over a, 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 a ethnic nationalist society that it's very dominant in South Africa. It, it, it has been once calculated to be more than 30% of the entire population of South Africa. I'm not sure now what are the statistics because our statistics are no longer dealing with ethnic uh, numbers as they used to in the past under apartheid. But it was a time where they were seen as a threat of our population. And if that uh, has not changed, then the position he held was a very important position for any person that has political ambitions to take him seriously. And it is not surprising that President Ramaphosa, over and above the fact that President Ramaphosa worked with a uh, uh, during the negotiations, and he knows him, he knows his contribution in those halls, and he knows what Umtuanapidangene did, as Jacob Zuma confirmed, to make sure that there is peace in KwaZulu Natal. Over and above that, President Ramaphosa, I think, was also looking at the reality that this man commands an important constituency in South Africa, and it cannot be undermined. Mm. And so is all other political leaders. You, you write about um, the decision, the, the, the managed discontent at the decision by President Ramaphosa to give Prince Butelezi a Category 1 uh, state funeral. You say that th there was some uh, discon uh, the discontent around this matter and that it had to be well managed. Um, talk to us about that. Yes, uh, well, I, I think when, 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 when President Ramaphosa announced a... a a Category 1 special state funeral for uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. There were a lot of discontent that emerged in mainstream social media conversations of the governing party, and I think the most brave person to deal with it was Dr. Snooki Zigalala, the president of the Veterans League. He, he, he raised in his letter, he, he wrote an open letter and it was circulated. In his letter he raised that 
uh, what criteria was used, and he tried to argue all other criteria in that letter. But the essence of that is that there was a discontent about uh, the, how uh, Prince Butelezi was memorialized. But the truth is, uh, you could not have not memorialized Prince Butelezi the way President Ramaphosa did, because Prince Butelezi has been the Prime Minister of the Zulu Nation, as they would prefer to call themselves, of the Zulu Nation for over 30 years, if not 40 years. So he is not an innocent person in South Africa. Actually, there are other people that were given uh, special uh, funerals, that were given uh, state funerals, and they are nowhere near in contribution comparison to what Prince Mutelezi did for his country, carrying the, the, the blood on his reputation of the violence that resulted out of the differences between the Inkata Freedom Party and the ANC. And he later tried to clean that image. But we all know, and we all agree as South Africans, and this, I don't think he, if none of the IFP people, his children and whatever, tried to contest that, that yes, the legacy of our father has blood in his hands. It has a history that is not good about it, but that history about it, it's like one of your anchor journalists yesterday gave a very interesting example is that if, if a good chef makes one mistake with one plate and he has a hundred other plates that are good, do you say he's no longer a good chef? I can't remember who's that, but yeah. one of your guys in the NCA said that yesterday. Yeah. The, the reconciliation with the IFP is going to be a conversation that... Uh, um, really is one that we, we talk about because we, as I read the Sunday Times, it, it says that in talks before his death, Butelezi had said he wanted the ANC to recognize his role as a freedom fighter and that he formed the IFP in 1975 with the permission from then long-serving ANC President Oliver Tambo. And, and yesterday we heard President Ramaphosa giving perhaps the strongest indication yet that he's committed to, to reconciliation talks between the ANC and the IFP. Now, looking at it um, just at face value and strategically, um, where does it place the ANC uh, perhaps uh, as the um, battle for the KZN vote is, is essentially, um, you know, building up as, 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 as the parties speak about reconciliation? Mbo, uh, Prince Mangosu uh, Tibutelezi, uh, is a grandchild of King Dini Zulu. His uncle is Pixley Kaseme, the man who, who, who was very instrumental in the formation of the ANC in 1912. So Prince Butelezi sees himself as ANC royalty. And, and he, see, he saw himself as that. And that's, he actually went further than what is being reported. He said he wants his membership cut back of the ANC. So he sees himself as being royalty of the ANC. So the ANC and the, the IFP should work on a mechanism where they should find a way of reconciling that request of Prince Mangosu to Butelezi so that it can be, it, it can be settled. But for the other thing about KwaZulu Natal is that KwaZulu Natal has experienced a very serious leadership drain. We cannot ignore that. Firstly, they lost Isilo, uh, Goodwill, King Goodwill, Zuelitin, Niga, Gatika, is it Pegizulu, Niga Pegizulu. They lost him. And in the process, and people don't want to talk about this, in the process, one of the senior leaders of the ANC to come from KwaZulu-Natal has had his reputation seriously damaged, mm. and he is no longer in the center of politics. I mean, President Jacob Zuma, who had a significant influence. If you saw when he walked into the stadium yesterday, you'd realize that this man has a space in Zulu national politics. Then now they lose. Uh, uh, Chief Pangosotu Buteles. And Mrs. Zulu still has to grow into that position. Yes, 
who is Silo. He is the king of this, but he has got to grow into that position and pick up the stature of that position. At the moment, he is seen as just the son of the king. He is seen as a young man, and he needs elders to help him to manage this Zulu nationalism. And except Jacob Zuma, except uh, the late Mangosutu and Goodwill Zelutini and, and few others, there are very few people that will occupy that space that uh, the prince occupied in the Zulu nationalist scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why the, the, the contestation to grab the votes that where in the IFP, because of the person of Butelezi himself, is going to be fierce, and if not properly managed, if not properly managed, can be dangerous. Because Slavisa is still trying. Slavisa is still trying to close the, the, the boots of Mangosuto Butelezi. So there's a serious crisis of who is going to be able to consolidate the politics of KwaZulu Natal to be straight. We saw the chairperson of the ANC. When he gave the speech there, uh, with due respect, I think he, he, he did not live up to the occasion and up to the moment. Yeah. He looked very junior in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have wished we had a person like Zuelim Kize as chairperson at that moment. I, but I, I would have liked us to him. expand on that, especially yeah. as Dr. Zuelim Kize, according to the Sunday World, is being uh, put there as a front runner for a candidate to succeed Butelezi in that position. But we've run out of time. Thank you so much for your time and that a very thorough analysis. Think Foundation founder, Dr. Lakima Tebula, and